I'm going to eat a ghost, actually. No problem. Well, those are some hard acts to follow, but I'll, uh, uh, I'll just uh, like today to say some words of praise for Palestinian uh, sustainable agriculture, okay? Uh, not only in honor of uh, the environmental theme for this week, but also in honor of the sacking of Selena Robinson. Uh, <laughs> a resurgence of God. Yeah, ignoramus ex uh, minister of post secondary education here, who infamously said that pre Nakba Palestine was a crappy piece of land with nothing on it. <laughs> of course, this is the biggest of the arsenal of big lies in the Israeli playbook. It's the, it's the grandfather, it's the Alpha and Omega of them all, right? That, um, you know, that they alone made the desert bloom, whereas Palestinians supposedly did not, and therefore deserved to have the land stolen from it in the way that it was. So that's what she was asserting, okay? And of course, it's the, the very theft of Palestinian lands proves that this is wrong, proves that they had value, right? Okay, sorry. Um, in other words, it's almost a self-refuting statement, right? Why bother to steal a land that had no value? But they stole it, right? And when we look at it closer, right? Um, before 1948, and indeed after, um, Palestinian agriculture was really productive, okay? It was a, you know, mostly a peasant agriculture, but it not only fed the people who worked the land, but Palestinian cities and towns. It was productive enough in many cases to be an export agriculture to uh, the Gulf states, things like wheat, uh, but also uh, fruit and vegetables of various kinds. So it produced large amounts of marketable surpluses. And that's what's erased in these kinds of statements, right? Was the productivity of, of uh, Palestinian uh, peasant agriculture. Indeed, even after the Nakba in the 1950s in the West Bank, where Palestinians still managed to retain, you know, uh, mountainous land for the most part, not irrigated valley bottom land like the start where it was mainly stolen from them. But nonetheless, uh, even during that time, it was producing equal to um, Israeli land at that, at that moment, or expropriated Palestinian land in Israel uh, during that time. And uh, um, again, uh, exporting to Gulf countries and that sort of thing. So um, it's really important to acknowledge, I think, uh, the productivity of ag uh, Palestinian agriculture. Um, as time went on, however, um, Israel, as previous speakers have noted, uh, increasingly started uh, not just kicking people off the land, but stealing water resources of, um, or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, disproportionately uh, draining aquifers, and these kind of, often in uh, contravention of agreements that were made. So over time, Palestinian agriculture had to move away by force, or by virtue of losing land and water from irrigated agriculture, which had been an important component of it, to dry uh, uh, rainfall agriculture, if you like. Um, and the original Palestinian systems were mixed, both irrigation and rainfall based, okay? But over time, they had to move more and more towards rainfall based, simply by virtue of losing uh, uh, these resources, right, the land and the, the uh, water. Um, so uh, yet, uh, even during this time, particularly Palestinian wheat agriculture, which is a uh, um, rainfall based, right? Um, it was very productive because of Palestinian knowledge, right? About how to uh, plow, how to tend uh, young plants, how to retain moisture in the soil. Uh, and, and very, so there's a bunch of techniques devised over, you know, centuries and millennia of experience on the land that uh, allowed this land to still be productive, even as the best parts of it and the water were being stolen. Okay, and I think again, this is really, really important to notice. And what what has happened over time then is Israelis have um, appropriated, you know, valley bottom productive land and all of the water. Is that Palestinian agriculture has gravitated more towards uh, the rainfall base uh, uh, and, and stuff that happens on more marginal lands, which they nonetheless make productive, right? And this has uh, uh, culminated in the situation that Bobby quite rightly pointed out that, you know, certain uh, emblems of that 
rainfall agriculture, like the olive trees, become start to symbolize this kind of, you can almost say, uh, resistance agriculture that Palestinians practice, right? That it's on the parts of the land that have been left to them that they can still hold on to, but through which they still assert their connection to the land. And the Palestinian resistance <clears throat> since the first intifada has um, really made a point of, uh, as well as you know, trying to simply get rid of occupiers from their land, to rehabilitate traditional agriculture, to do research uh, on the land, to create seed banks, to do urban agriculture, to do a bunch of things that uh, assert their ability to feed themselves and their relationship to the land. Okay? So Palestinian rainfall agriculture has increasingly become part of Palestinian resistance. And, uh, yeah, let's hear it, let's, let's hear it for that. Yeah, totally. Uh, so, um, meanwhile, Israel's uh, uh, voracious demand for water, that it just sort of knows no end, has, you know, has led them to keep uh, uh, draining aquifers, you know, practicing this monoculture, uh, 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 intensive uh, form of agriculture that simply isn't, uh, uh, as adapted to the dry conditions that that exist in this area, uh, and it gobbles up more and more water, takes it more, uh, increasingly away from Palestine for, as we hear, swimming pools, but also agriculture, right? And ultimately, um, it's gotten to the point now we see in Gaza where uh, there isn't even drinking water uh, for Palestinians anymore, right? As long, shame, right? As long ago as 2012, the UN said that by 2020, Gaza would not be inhabitable for lack of drinking water. Well, we've got to that point now, right? So, uh, as our government, our, you know, our abominable government, uh, supports the, the Gaza genocide, pulls out of uh, pulls funding from UNRWA, the last bit of shame, shame, right? Let's keep in the forefront of our minds that Palestinians despite all of this, have found ways to feed themselves, have uh, 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 you know, asserted their connection to the land in their diet and in their ways of life, right? Let's not forget that. These are, these are people who need our assistance now, absolutely, but it's only because they've been driven into this situation through a, you know, endless genocide uh, um, and uh, dispossession from the land. So, thank you. Thank you.